The Cambrian, the most classic of the what the hell is this fossil time periods. And that's especially true in the Burgess Shale where many different animals were starting to evolve and eventually evolve into forms much like the ones we see today, but there were still a lot of experiments going on. And some of them we have a very, very good grasp of. Like the trilobites are kind of their own thing, but we at least understand generally where they fall. The brachiopods still have living members today, as do some other fossils from the formation. Unfortunately though, there are then things like Morella, and Morella was a relatively small fossil. It could only grow up to about 2.4 centimeters, so around an inch. It was, again, small. But it's actually one of the most common fossils from the Burgess Shale, and we still don't necessarily know exactly what it is. But what does the evidence say? Well, some chemical studies have suggested it may have had a very iridescent carapace, so kind of shiny. But we also know it was a carapace because there's one that was fossilized while shedding this outer skin or essentially this exoskeleton. So that means we can be fairly confident about placing it very near the arthropods. Now, whether or not it's a true arthropod or not is still up for some debate, but that at least gives us some kind of ballpark to put it into, although it may not necessarily be a home run if we can't narrow it down more specifically. So let's look at what else it has going on for it. Even comparing it to some other animals we can't really nail down in the fossil record, like Opabinia, which you can actually check out our video for our video on that animal, it still has some similarities and some differences. Like Opabinia, it still had segments, and it's been really hard to tell between both Opabinia and Morella whether or not they actually had limbs. But it does seem like the projections going off the side of those separate segments likely contained gills in both Opabinia and Morella. And so this means it was probably breathing by moving these throughout the water column either just while it was along the bottom of the ocean or as it was swimming through it. And there is some solid evidence that Morella was probably swimming. The first piece of evidence for them swimming actually comes from the very end segments of that body, where it's been suggested that they may have been able to actually move these last few segments, kind of like a dolphin and generate propulsion by moving it up and down. The second piece of evidence comes from some of the antennae. And that's because Morella was interpreted as having four separate antennae However, it seems like two of those may have more likely been swimming structures. And this isn't totally unprecedented. There's some crustaceans specifically within the genus Daphnia, which also use their antennae as swimming structures. So there may be some level of convergence. And it doesn't seem like Morella was directly related to this animal for reasons I'll discuss later, but it does at least mean some indication that there was actual swimming in Morella, rather than just walking along the bottom and feeding on whatever it found. Additionally, Daphne is actually a lot smaller than the largest Morella specimens, which again, about 2.4 centimeters, which means about 24 millimeters, whereas the largest Daphne are about six millimeters. So we're looking at something one fourth the size of the largest Morella specimens. So it's really not likely that they're that directly related, unless of course Daphne did have a fossil record, which showed that they were much larger in that fossil record, which we really don't have a lot of fossils of them right now. And this brings up a very interesting point about fossils of Morella, and that's that there's a lot of them. And when I say that, I mean one study was able to look at over 1,000 specimens that are just held at the Royal Ontario Museum. And this is opposed to just a handful of specimens that we have for most other animals. Also, that number 1,000 is only one ninth of the Royal Ontario Museum's entire Morella collection, which is to say the Royal Ontario Museum has over 9,000 fossils of Morella, and again, most fossils, there's maybe a handful if you're lucky. And that's not even half of the total number of Morella fossils found, which is somewhere over 20,000. They are incredibly common, in fact, the most common fossils to come out of the Burgess Shale. And when we're looking at this many specimens and some of the other specimens of related animals that come from different places around the world, that does suggest that we might be able to figure out what it is just because we have such a great number of specimens to look at. So what have researchers come up with? I mean, they don't know. And that's really unfortunate, because again, we have tons of specimens, but anytime we try and figure out what it is, there's just a few features that just don't line up with any modern groups. And this includes the crustaceans. While Daphnia has swimming appendages and Morella likely did, there's still some other features that suggest they're not the same, because Daphnia is a crustacean. And crustaceans have three pairs of legs right behind the mouth to assist in feeding. And Morella didn't have these. So it's not a crustacean and therefore not closely related to Daphnia. So even when we find some of these analogs, which may have been behaving similarly, swimming throughout the water column and eating relatively small prey, it doesn't necessarily mean that these animals are related. 
only that they have convergent body plans and potentially convergent behavior, which is neat to know we might be able to understand what Morella was doing, but when we're trying to understand the broader evolutionary impact Morella may have had on other animals, it's not really so great. And this same pattern of things being wrong tracks with other groups. Morella has been suggested to even be trilobites, and they're not trilobites because of various reasons. And that lack of consistency for what they plot as, along with the general lack of anything at all like them in the modern day, makes it very hard to place them, because they've also potentially been placed as Fuxianids and Mercurians, and a lot of broad and diverse groups of the different arthropods that are now extinct, but were evolving during the Cambrian. Because again, this is the Cambrian explosion. This is when all these different forms are starting to evolve. And so the fact that they're not necessarily plotting perfectly well just means there was a lot of diversity and rapid evolution happening here, which we know occurred, which again, just reinforces the idea that we don't know what this animal is. But there are still some features that are very, very interesting that do help us understand some of the broader trends in evolution within the arthropods, specifically the dark stains that are on things like many Morella fossils, as well as some of the related animals, such as Furca from the Czech Republic. Now, arthropods don't have blood the same way we do. There is a substance used to transport oxygen to different parts of the body, at least in most of these animals. However, it is slightly different chemically, so in general, it's called hemolymph. However, if I do call it blood and not hemolymph, that's because these two terms are pretty much interchangeable as long as you're being clear about which group of these animals you're talking about. And here I think I'm making pretty clear I'm talking about arthropods and morella rather than vertebrates. So let's look at what this means for their evolution in general. Now, one of the most important differences between early hemolymph and even our blood and some of the later more derived hemolymphs is that early hemolymph largely used copper as the binding element for oxygen to transport it around the body. In these dark stains on Morella, we might actually be able to chemically see if there is higher copper, which would be a strong suggestion that this is actually some of the preserved hemolymph. And wouldn't you know it, when researchers tested the parts of Morella, including the very dark stains, chemically, they found an increased abundance of copper, which does suggest that rather than being stomach contents which leaked out of these fossils, it's much more likely to have been blood, which means we can actually narrow down, at least somewhat, when blood evolved. And this does in general line up with many of the genetic studies, so it does make sense that we'd start finding it in the fossil record, although it is still unexpected. Finding blood is always going to be unexpected, it's just, hey, it lines up with what we should expect to find if it got preserved. And in this case, it seems like it did. And I want to be clear that the authors here were pretty thorough. They also tested other organisms from the Burgess Shale, which don't have these stains, and found nothing like this. And they also did test the matrix surrounding Morella, but not where any of the staining was. And they didn't find this increase in copper. So it's incredibly, incredibly likely that we actually have fossilized blood from Morella. And so while we can't necessarily say exactly what kind of animal it is, it is still incredibly informative for our understanding of the broader evolutionary trends of arthropods. And again, with that genetic study, it does help to suggest that our genetics understanding is pretty solid. And there's still gonna be some debate about this, but at least we have a good ballpark estimate from the fossil record that we can compare genetic studies to. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This was voted on by our patrons at Patreon. So if you want to have some say in what videos we make, feel free to join there. Marilla, knowing that there's that many of them, I am genuinely a bit surprised that we haven't been able to figure out better what it is. But I think part of that is just that they're all preserved basically as smears on rocks, which makes it look really fancy, but it means when you're trying to understand the animal in 3D, it makes it a bit hard. With all of that in mind, be safe, take care, get vaccinated, wear a mask and do not go extinct.